Okay, let's go live. It's James speaking. Um, if you're creating screen captures or doing any kind of online video training, uh, the Gemini 2.0 uh, Flash AI tool that came out from Google last week, I guess, is um, it, it's going to change everything for you when you're creating online videos or training material. You have an education business, so you have to be ready for it. Now, I may sound a little bit of, um, you know, pie in the sky kind of stuff over this, but I just want you to think about the changes that are going to happen just if you're doing things, for example, like a screen capture video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through seven kind of ways or examples of how it's going to change the videos you make. And I'm also going to talk about five things you may have forgotten about. So stick around after. And uh, I think those are the ones that everyone's forgetting about. And it's why I wanted to share them today. So, you know, I, I get really excited about this and I'm going to try my best to talk about this, but I won't be able to show you yet. And that's the part that I just want you to be aware of. Um, the AI studio that I played around with in the last video that I did on Thursday, um, you know, I did some examples of how it can work and it did something called multimodal real-time inputs. And that means that I can interact by showing my screen a video or my face and or text or audio. So multiple modals and I can interact with the AI tool. That was the big thing. Second thing is it's live and in real time. So I talked about how that's going to change stuff, but I wanted to look at some specific examples because I got feedback saying, I don't know how it's going to affect what I'm already doing. So those are the seven things I'm going to kind of just talk about. And then those five that if you forget about this, you're going to run into trouble because even though I'm not showing a demo today, if we're talking in three months or four months or five months from now, it is going to affect you. So if you're creating your online course, your first online course, and you're taking time, you got a big course, or maybe you're thinking about education business, how does this fit into what I'm doing? These are the things that you're going to have to uh, think about. So I'm going to try and use examples that are ones about, uh, you know, using software because that's the one. Anything that you're doing on the screen, uh, this can definitely apply to. So anytime, you know, if you're using uh, a screen capture and you're showing or teaching how to use a particular program like Excel, for example, the ones that are going to jump out at you is anytime there's going to be if statements or any time that you're doing a demonstration, um, this is going to actually change everything that you're doing because step-by-step -step processes are now going to be able to be narrated by you while you're doing it. And it's going to change again what you're actually showing on the screen. So that's an easy example just to kind of talk about it. The other one is, is you're going to be able to be involved in what if statements. And what I'm talking about that is, let's say you're, you know, you're teaching uh, something, for example, like how to use uh, video editing in Canva. And you'll be able to ask. It's like normally you show a slide or editing steps with some bullet points. Maybe you show a menu and show where some things are. The what ifs are going to be available now directly with uh, Gemini Flash. So when you're showing this and recording this tutorial, you're going to be able to ask things like, what if this happens or what if that happens? And it's not you actually going to have to do that work. The AI tool is the one that's going to be using it. The other one is going to be real-time problem solving. So if you're doing some kind of presentation, you're in a workshop, you're doing something like that, um, maybe you're doing a live webinar or something like that, you're going to be able to interact live in real time answering questions that happen when a student or someone you're teaching actually asks a question. So it's not looking through a linear deck or some kind of presentation that you have. This is not a linear process anymore. It's completely adaptable to the unique situation that you're in. Number four is stuff that's post work. So for example, if you do some kind of presentation and you do a screen capture, because you have that video that you narrated, the AI tool has the ability to do things like a visual summary of what you taught them. So if you're doing long presentations and it's uh, too long, didn't watch, which happens to me personally, it's like sometimes I just go on for too much. You're going to have AI tools that are going to allow you to condense everything, maybe that was in text 
or maybe that was in bullet points in a slide deck and turn it into something visual that people can condense really quickly all of the important information that you've put out other than the longer version where a lot of times teachers and presenters and stuff can get carried away uh, answering questions. Um, so here's what most people think of. They've got these changes that are happening, but here's what happens for the presenter as you the presenter. Um, the first thing is you're going to be able to do a prompt while you're actually working for this and say something like, uh, Gemini, highlight the parts of the slide where I'm uh, selecting the tool. So a lot of times I end up doing things like saying, uh, see my mouse up in the right hand corner? We may able to say to the uh, Gemini that's there and just say, uh, you know, uh, highlight the area where my mouse is. So we're verbally going to be able to interact with the presentations that we do instead of having to tell what we're doing visually when we're doing these kind of screen captures. So anytime you're doing menus, settings, tools on pieces of software, that completely changes again how we create the tutorials. Uh, complex concepts. Uh, for example, uh, Gemini, can you give me a more simple example of that or explanation of this? Uh, oftentimes this can happen is you're looking at something like uh, SEO rules or ideas on getting search engine optimization, which is a whole other video tutorial. Or maybe you're saying, how can I rank my, uh, uh, my video on YouTube higher? And there's all these different things that apply. So you're going to be able to give a simpler example. Uh, things like this, when you start using layman's terms or you're using examples where you're the one that's actually using terms that may be more advanced for a beginner, you're going to be able to say, hey, give me another example that is for a beginner or advanced user, and it's going to be able to change the concept that they're trying to do. Um, anytime you're doing any processes, like standard operating procedures, you're now like, uh, you can show it, but then what's going to happen is you're going to be able to do a prompt and just say, Gemini, outline the steps I just demonstrated. So a lot of times you're not going to have to do recaps or kind of go back over things. You're going to get Gemini to do the recaps and actually show the process that you taught. So it's not you narrating. You can actually do what you're doing and then have uh, Gemini Flash basically do the recap of what you're doing and put text on the screen, for example. Um, you know, anything that you're doing step by step, like add a new page, select a template. Uh, publish the page if you're using on WordPress, for example. And that's number four is that visual annotations in real time. I kind of alluded to that. Anytime we're doing any kind of uh, thing where we're verbally interacting, or even if we're moving our hand on a video, uh, you're going to be able to ask or prompt Gemini to please add notations and or bubbles or screens, that kind of thing, directly on your video or in your screen capture tutorial while you're doing it. So, you know, if I move my mouse, for example, to a menu, you can have a uh, claw or sorry, uh, Gemini just go, uh, you know, move your mouse to this menu or select this item from the menu. Um, the other one, you know, real time visual annotations. The next one is the what if scenarios. That's number five. If, um, everyone's learning and they each have their unique situation, Often it's very, very difficult because there are what if situations. What if I'm trying to do this? Or what if I'm trying to do that? Um, you know, if you have a whole bunch of examples and you teach one on your video or in your slide deck or in your presentation, you can just say what if and give three examples of what ifs that get shown for you where you don't have to go through them. So in Photoshop, for example, let's say you're doing brush sizes or filters or changing colors or removing backgrounds, anything that you're showing right now, if someone goes, well, what if, or, and then it's going to actually be able to show it for you. Um, the next one is examples and comparisons. And, you know, there's all sorts of talk about having things like storytelling and being able to tell stories, which is really important. But a lot of times, if you don't have a personal story, or there isn't one that applies to the unique situation that you're in, or you're not able to weave a story in, you're going to have a, a place where you're going to ask for, can you give me some real life examples? Or can you compare this 
to this situation. So things like comparison and examples that you had to do in the past, you won't have to do anymore or you'll have to use them differently in the actual tutorials that you do. And again, the visual recaps. And a lot of times, for example, I use a tool like GLASP. Um, the, that one, you know, does a recap of a YouTube video and it takes a transcription and gives me five bullet points. All of those things now are gonna be able to be done by you. So you're gonna be able to condense a lot more information into smaller chunks. So let me just go over those, the seven that I talked about. So number one, highlight key steps and actions. Number two, simplify concept, uh, complex concepts. Uh, number three, break down a process step by step. Number four, visual annotations in real time. Uh, number five was uh, what if scenarios. And number six was examples or comparisons. And number seven was visual recaps. Now you're probably going, James, why did you just mention those seven? If I was using Gemini right now, I could have prompted it to give those seven tips live on the fly or as soon as I said, do a recap for me. So that just changed exactly what I was creating when I'm creating online course material or educational material. Um, seven prompts or seven tips went through it. It's gonna be able to do the recap for us. So if you're doing any kind of numbered kind of things, it's going to change for you and it's going to be changing quickly. Now, I went through seven things just as examples of what may happen to you personally, but here's the one that everyone forgets about. And there's five things I want you to kind of open your mind to. And it's something that I'm thinking about as I start to build all of these additional tutorials and things that are so exciting when we get into this AI prompt and education business. And you can tell I'm talking pretty quickly here because I'm really... I'm excited and scared about this because it's happening quickly and we're going to have to adapt to it, like it uh, or not. There's still a whole bunch of opportunity for us to be live and authentic in the training, but I think the way that we approach it is going to be a little bit, well, probably a lot different in the next four to six months. So here's the big um, thing that everyone's forgetting. I was talking about how the instructor creates their content that changes. I didn't talk about the learner. So it's not me giving prompts, it's the learner giving prompts based on your information. And this is the one that is really, really freaky and is gonna change how you put together your content. So there's five different examples of that. So let's say you put together a particular video of how to use a, a piece of software or you show a, a particular example of something. Think, for example, if the learner said, Gemini, can you show me where that tool is located again? They showed a video with a menu item in the settings and a submenu and a submenu. The learner is going to be able to interact with your video live in real time and ask where it is. And it'll be able to show you or give you context on where it is if it was in the video, more importantly, it can give you options on some of the choices that were there. So it'll be able to clarify instructions for the content that you're creating and it's the learner prompting that. Not you to create the video, but it's them interacting with the video. Another thing is simplifying uh, explanations. Anytime if you're doing a tutorial or you're teaching, it's like you try and put an explanation in but again, that explanation may not fit to an individual person or their unique situation. So the person that's watching your video or is watching or taking your training, they're going to be able to say, what happens if I choose another option? They're going to be able to ask that. You don't have to think about it. They're going to be able to move around throughout your training, answering the questions that they have in real time. And it doesn't obviously apply just to learning a piece of software. Anytime you're presenting information, whether it be a talking head or showing how to do something, that is going to change for you. So be able to simplify it. What happens if Gemini goes, hey, I'm a beginner give me a particular explanation of how that would apply to me. So the person learning asset, or I've already done that, give me another explanation with another different scenario in it. And that's number three, is the what if scenarios. 
Again, completely personalized to the individual learner because they're going to be able to say, what happens if I choose this other option instead? So they're the one that's doing the live interactive learning just by prompting or working with a tool uh, like Gemini. Uh, real life examples, same idea. They're going to be able to say, uh, you know, here's something that showed I have this situation. Can you give me an example of how that applies? And again, this applies to any kind of teaching that you're doing. Again, making it completely uh, personal and more importantly, not static or linear. It'll move everywhere through your video back and forth because it doesn't, let's say for example, you ask something and it says, oh, that was at the start of the video or was covered earlier. It'll bring you back to that part of the video. And that's the learner doing that. They can skip forward, they can go back, they can review whatever they need to review based on the material that you've created. Real life examples in the fifth one is quick recaps. And again, this is one, for example, I've been talking here uh, 15, 16 minutes already. Um, and I'm giving some example of going through these things. If someone just doesn't want to listen to this or they find it's too long, if they've got Gemini, it's give me a quick recap. Uh, recap. Repeat the key steps that I missed. We just did seven steps and five examples right here. So this is like mind blowing kind of stuff. And you got to think about this because there's two situations where this is going to apply. The first one is, is when uh, us as the instructor, you know, we're, we're going to be able to have AI or an AI tool like Gemini on our desktop. But what about the learner watching? There's two places that this is going to happen. One is, for example, is you're, we're going to be able to have Gemini embedded into the videos and the player that we're watching our videos on. For example, on my campus, we use Vimeo to uh, host and deliver the actual videos that are in the campus. The video Vimeo player has an open API. And my understanding is that Gemini will work with a tool like Vimeo to provide the interface right within the video. So the learners are going to be able to interact with the video live in real time without even having uh, Gemini Flash installed on their particular desktop. So it's going to be in the video, the screen capture in the player. That's the first one. And even, um, you know, even when it's not, there's going to be agents available that allow those to run um, within the actual uh, video. So they've got the actual video and they've got it installed on their desktop. And although this isn't you know, I can't show you this today. Uh, I am convinced that this is going to, again, change everything for us. And here's the big thing I want to think you and uh, think, have you think about uh, as I leave you today. Who owns Gemini 2.0? Google. Who owns YouTube? Google. I'm betting that before we know it, Gemini 2 is going to be built in to YouTube. So even if we're doing courses and trying to sell courses, these AI agents like Gemini that are multimodal are going to be built in to the interfaces that we use on a regular basis. So thinking about learning, thinking about training, think about education business, it's changing and it's changing quickly. So I just went through a couple of these. If you have some examples or more questions, please put them in the comments below. Of course, join the trainingsites.io site. You can just go to the website that's there below and uh, like and subscribe to the channel. My name is James. Uh, I just love talking about this stuff. It's cool. It's happening. And uh, if you're in the education space, whether it's YouTube or courses or any time when you're trying to teach people about stuff you're passionate about, think about what you're doing this month, next month, or the month after because it's changing. So take care, expect the best. I'll be back tomorrow or one of the next days showing you how to start, build, and grow your education business.